And right now, we are seeing the Pennsylvania Secretary of State speaking to the public, talking about having still some votes to count. Tell us why this account is so important for the presidency. Well, first and foremost, Sherry, uh, delight to be with you and Heidi. Uh, the number of electoral votes involved. There are enough electoral votes that uh, whoever gets this, if, if Vice President Biden gets this, then the whole race is over, regardless of what happens in for places like Nevada. So it's critically important in that respect. Uh, that's why everybody's focused on it. It's a fascinating story because President Trump has been ahead in this state for quite some time, but the lead has been reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing. And it's thought that a lot of the votes still to be counted, absentee ballots that they're, they're counting, may well predominantly go for Democrats and may turn around. In fact, some experts in the state and experts in politics actually predict right now it will ultimately turn around and be an advantage for Vice President Biden. Right, and David, we're looking at other states like Georgia with a count. The gap between in terms of the president's lead is down to less than 10,000 votes. What is the easiest path of victory for each candidate at this point? Well, I'll tell you the hardest, and that's uh, for President Trump as a practical matter, because he essentially has to run the slate at this point. He has to get everything that's left in order for it to work. So uh, Vice President Biden, on the other hand, has several different paths. If he gets Nevada, that is enough to get him just to 270, given the other projections made so far, just right on the number that you need to prevail. As I said, Pennsylvania would do it for him. So there's various paths that he can get there with. And that's assuming that Arizona remains in the blue column or the Democrats column. Some people are questioning that, although the Associated Press, which has been very good about this, is steadfast in saying that state will ultimately go for Vice President Biden. And uh, David, just until yesterday, it was said that the blue wave was over, but there could hmm. still be a chance. I mean, it seems that some Senate seats in Georgia are still up for grabs. Well, very much up for grabs, exactly right. I mean, uh, we, we knew that one of those two seats, a special election, was going to go to a runoff, that is to say, a replay, essentially, with just two candidates in January. Now it appears that David Perdue, the incumbent Republican senator from Georgia, may also be headed in the same direction. He's already tweeted some things saying he's prepared for that if it happens, and now we have ABC News, Miles shop now saying that that looks like where it's going to go. He was just above the 50 percent margin and it just came down and down and down and down and he's right at that point or about to go below it. David, we continue to hear from the Secretary of State in Pennsylvania saying we're coming into the home stretch here, but the closer the race, the longer it's going to take to get that full count, but saying that they should, uh, despite those hundreds of thousands of ballots still to count, majority of ballots will be counted by Friday. Once the count happens, if it is called, if Joe Biden has enough electoral votes to get to 270, what happens from there? Because we know President Trump doesn't like to lose. He's already filed suit in a number of different states in a number of different ways. He's called for a recount in Wisconsin. Where do we expect to see that battle to go? Well, exactly right. I mean, we already have quite a few lawsuits pending, including some in Pennsylvania itself. There was one pre-existing one about whether ballots that were received after Election Day but actually postmarked before could be counted or not. That's been put to one side. There are lawsuits filed by the president's campaign saying you should stop the counting in Pennsylvania because we want access to, to the rooms. So there are a variety of legal disputes, none of them going very far or very fast right now. Now, if it's a very small margin, by statute often there will be a recount. Although in the history of the United States when there are recounts, and they happen not infrequently, the number of votes that change are not large. It's, it's really on the, marriage, it, and on the margin. It's in the hundreds, often not even the thousands. President Trump, very early Early on, brought on the, the the idea of going to the Supreme Court. You're a lawyer by training. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what happens here if, in fact, it goes to the Supreme Court, and is there a likelihood that that will happen? Well, first of all, he's got a long way to go before he goes to the Supreme Court because the way it works here, you have to start in either state or federal court at the bottom level, which is the trial level. You have to go through that and then get to the Court of Appeals. They have to go to the Supreme Court, and then it's up to the Supreme Court. They don't have to take the case. It's up to up to their judgment whether they want to take it or not. Now you can expedite that. That happened 20 years ago in 2000. It went up fairly quickly because there is a time deadline on this as a practical matter. The electors are supposed to meet in mid-December. There's a December 8th deadline, essentially. But it takes a while to get there. But you have to have a federal claim. The Supreme Court only reviews federal claims. It's basically a constitutional claim. That's not always easy. You've got to say that something going on at the state is not just wrong, but it's unconstitutional. That's a tough thing to prove in general. David, you see markets bizarrely sanguine at the idea of a policy gridlock, right? No more tax changes, uh, potentially. No changes when it comes to climate change uh, policy. But the problem is we may not get to the kind of stimulus package that the Fed is now calling for. Is there a possibility that should President Trump 
leave the White House, that there could be a bit more unity, there could be a bit more willingness from both sides of the aisle to work together. It'll be a very different Washington, if in fact particularly the Senate remains in Republican hands. Right now that's up for grabs, as Sherry was just talking about. But, but the fact of the matter, you would have to reach across the aisle, as we say. You would have to have Republicans working with Democrats. Now, some people who want to see the bright side of this say, we do have in Joe Biden, a former senator, as well as a former vice president, somebody who's done that a lot, knows Mitch McConnell. They may not be bosom buddies, but they know each other. They can work together with one another. And as a practical matter, uh, uh, President Biden, if that happened, would not be able to really uh, cater to some of the more left side of his party. He would have to go toward the center. And some people think that might not be a bad thing, particularly some people on Wall Street and some people running companies in this country.